Welcome. In this lecture, we'll learn how seismic forces travel from the location where they originate to the underground through horizontal and vertical systems. This lecture is the first part of the lecture on lateral load resisting system design. The second part of the lecture will focus on the seven basic design principles. Forces under earthquake motion result from inertia of masses. As you can see on the slide, the direction of the forces is opposite to the direction of the motion. With the motion of masses, the forces are transferred to the foundation and the ground to the floors, the horizontal system, and later to the vertical systems. The horizontal system is a floor loaded in a horizontal way. The floor is supported in the direction of the motion by a vertical system and acts like a beam, with tension in the top and compression in the bottom. There are two important issues in the design. First is the shape of the floor plate. The plate should not be slender because this will result in large deflections which will cause damage. In that case, intermediate support should be designed to limit the deflection. Second, the location of the voids. These voids should not be at the bottom or top in the tension or compression locations. They should also not be next to the supporting vertical system, where the shear force are the highest. When designing voids, it is best to choose one of the possibilities shown in the right-hand side of the slide. New buildings are designed in such a way that the floors are stiff in their planes, so that the vertical system is loaded in plane and not out of plane, which will cause damage. There are in principle three basic vertical systems, known as the shear walls, brace frames and moment frames. These systems must be present from the top floor to the foundation. The three systems offer different possible architectural possibilities. Shear will offer limited possibilities of penetration, while brace frames offer larger triangular penetration. The brace frames offer larger rectangular penetration, but will have larger beams and columns that must be connected with stiff and strong joints. The inertia forces causes three types of forces in the vertical system. These are the gravity force, the shear force and the moment. The moment results in a tension and compression forces. The foundation of the buildings has to resist all these forces. This can be achieved by adding a footing, so that friction at the bottom will resist the shear force and the distributed vertical soil pressure will resist the gravity force and moment. If the foundation is piled, the shear force are reacted by the shear forces in the piles that are transferred by contact stresses to the ground. The gravity load and moment will result in actual forces in the piles that are transversed to the ground by skin friction and pile top forces. In this lecture, I have explained how seismic forces travel from the location where they originate to the underground through horizontal and vertical systems. In part two of this session, we will discuss the seven basic design principles. Thank you.